I'm going to randomly generate new groups to practice for the test. No one finds that surprising at all? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, say that again one time. I, yeah, I said we're doing what tomorrow? Practice for the test. So we're not taking the test tomorrow. We're going to take it on Tuesday. Why? Okay. So, a couple of quick things. I'm glad that someone noted that statement that we are practicing for the test tomorrow. We're going to practice today, but I'm not seeing my third block today, and there's a lot out for the basketball. Uh, if it was just one or the other, I might still have the test tomorrow. But um, that means, Ethan, all you're going to miss is practice. I will give you the resources today that we're going to use to practice, um, and then we're taking that test on Tuesday. Okay. All right, um, so we're going to have some updates to the schedule, right? Uh, I didn't want to, but I'm going to have to move that test to Tuesday. We're going to start our new unit next Wednesday. Um, and as a heads up, I have completely updated everything on Schoology through today. Uh, it also has the solutions to the understanding check that we did yesterday on there. I will give you your understanding checks back tomorrow um, to use that to help study for the test. We're going to have new groups tomorrow. I've changed that since we have so few today. All right, we're going to finish up one thing out of the textbook. Um, I think that's right. Before we move to the forms of quadratic practice sheet that I've already given you. Um, that's something that we'll continue tomorrow along with some practice on linear and exponential equations to get ready for that test. All righty then. Uh, yeah, go ahead and get your textbook out. I think we're somewhere around M1-57 or something like that at this point. Or 61. 61, okay. We're going to get up and moving in just a second after I reestablish a couple of key things. you can actually picture roughly what that parabola would look like without even picking up a graphing calculator. And that's kind of the goal because it's going to help you moving forward. So what I mean by that is when I look at, I'm just making this one up on the spot. When I look at this um, equation, I don't know everything about it, but I know what two key features. Vertex, line of symmetry, and also concavity. What would my vertex be? Right? H would be a positive 2. K would be a negative 4. So I know it looks roughly like this. And then the parabola is concave. Uh, that's not exact. But that's a pretty decent sketch of what it looks like. And I can picture it right away. Okay. And so that's kind of the goal here is that we want to be able to see an equation and know, oh, that's what that parabola would look like. If I gave you y equals negative 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 3, I have factored form. So I know about the what? x intercepts, right? I know my roots and I know the concavity. What are the x intercepts or my roots in this case? 1, 0, and? Be careful, remember, for an x-intercept, the y is 0 and the root is the x-value, right? So negative 3 and then comma 0, right? And so I have those x-intercepts, and I also know the parabola is concave 
down. So would the vertex need to be above or below the x-axis to be concave down? Yeah, if I put it here, it has to be concave up, but if I know it's there, I know it's concave down, and I will point this out. I don't know exactly what the y is, but I know that my axis of symmetry would have to be here. Does anyone know why? My axis of symmetry, and so my vertex, would have to be horizontally right here. Why is that? Because you're average. Right? Doesn't the axis of symmetry have to be right in the middle of our roots? And so if I have roots, man, that makes it really easy to graph it. I, again, I don't know exactly where it is vertically, but I know my roots, I know my axis of symmetry has to be right in the middle. And so I can picture that parabola very efficiently if I know my features. Now, some of us need some practice with that, though. Uh, we already finished this. Oh, I lied. We already finished that with you all, right? We already finished it. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to jump to this practice then. Um, that was for my second block because they hadn't finished the stuff in the book. So, I want us to work on numbers one through three. We're going to use our vertical surfaces around the room. You can use your notes um, from the book if you want to keep your book. And I don't care what vertical surface you go to. Uh, Marshall, I'm talking about this paper that I passed out at the beginning. Okay, so I don't care which vertical surface you go to, but I do want everyone to work on number one and identify all the features through number one, justifying why. So uh, let's figure out what group or where we're going to go. Um, is anybody passionate about going to the TV? I got multiple people from group, from group six, only one from group one. So group six, you go to TV. Anybody want the chalkboard? Y'all want chalkboard? Anybody else want chalkboard? All right, so y'all get to split this whiteboard. So group five, go to that whiteboard. Group one to this whiteboard. Let's identify the different features. I'll be coming around helping, talking through things. But let's figure out those features. You will be allowed to use a calculator on this because there's not pretty numbers at all times. But if you understand the concepts, nothing has changed. Features gave us the most trouble. Vertex, okay? Do we need to talk about concavity or x-intercepts or the y-intercepts? No, sir. Okay. So we're good with concavity, concave down, because why? A is less than zero, right? A is negative three-fourths, concave down. Where are those x-intercepts coming from? The roots. Do not forget with our roots, what do we have to do with the symbols or the signs? We need the opposite, right? And by the way, don't forget, I still recommend this. I, If I were y'all, I would have written out my factored form right above this to help me get started. Right? Just take that extra second, write it out. The more times you write out that formula, the easier it's going to be to remember it. Just take a second to write it out. Okay? Um, so we've got our roots. We took the opposite. Y-intercept. Are we okay with Y-intercept now? Yes. Any questions about Y-intercept? Cam, what do we know about every Y-intercept that's ever existed? The X is equal to zero. Do not forget, right, the Y-intercept is easiest to see in standard form, but no matter what, the X is zero for a Y-intercept. That's foundation. And I'm going to come back to this idea in just a second. But because X is equal to zero, what can I do with zero to find the Y-intercept? Substitute zero in for X. And so what you should have done is H of zero is equal to, right, and this is what most of us did, Now this matters for here, right? If I know what my x value was, I was able to substitute it in. Where some of us are getting trapped on the vertex, first off, I will say I recommend finding the axis of symmetry first. With the factored form, where do we always know the axis of symmetry is located? In the middle. So what do I do to my roots to get that thing that's in the middle? I average them. Average your roots. To get, and this is fundamental, H. Please note, if I average the roots, that's not just giving me the line of symmetry, that's figuring out what H is, because the axis of symmetry is always X equals... X is always equal to H. 
The line of symmetry always goes through what key point? The vertex. And that vertex has the point h comma k. x equals h is always my line of symmetry. But in factored form, I don't have h. To get h, I have to average my roots. And so um, be careful when you substitute this in. David, you ran into the same issue, mm -hmm. right? What, what did this group run into when they got this to get this negative 8.05? Oh, we are. Um, they got negative 8.05. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't the negative. If you remember, when we went back and looked at it, did you oh, add first? Okay. Rinse. Be careful, because this is what you, I want you all to do back and look at your calculators. More than likely, if you look at it, is that negative 7 being added to the negative 2.1 first? What do I need to do when I put this into the calculator to make sure they get added first? Parentheses. Put those parentheses in there to make sure they add first, then divide by 2. So what h value should we have gotten? x equals? Negative 4.55. That, that's the uh, line of symmetry we should have gotten. Now, we draw on what I know group 2 did. Group 2, once you found this, what did you end up doing? How did you get your vertex from this line of symmetry? Ethan's group. I got it. David, what did he say? That's not how I'm with this. Can you say it again, Ethan? Substituted. Substituted what? The x into the the x into the problem. Can anyone add any more clarity into what he's saying? He substituted. He substituted the h, the h which is negative 4.55, in for x. Right? So, okay, you're a little confused on this earlier, but remember, this h, isn't h the input for my vertex? So if I know the input, I just substitute that in to get my output. output right? That's all you have to do. Just like here, I knew my input was 0, so I substituted it in to get out my y-intercept. Here's my input. I substitute that in. There's my h. And so it's not a pretty number. Um, but this is why we've got calculators when the numbers are ugly. But we substitute that in and we simplify. Can I erase the axis of symmetry part right here to show the simplifying? Is that okay? okay. No? Yeah? They might say you substitute h in for that h in both spots and then you get the output of k. Right. So you would substitute your h in, right? So substitute it, substitute. All my markers are starting to die. Let me get some more out. Substitute h in to get k. Once you know your input, you substitute it in to get your output. And for that, the factored form, we know that the input is just in the middle of my roots. That's it. And so, when I put that into the calculator, Ethan, which I'll get, you got what? 4.50, there it is. Yep. So an input of negative 4.55 for my vertex has an output of 4.5. Um, so what's my vertex? There's my vertex. That's it. If you know your input, you substitute it in to get out your output. What are your questions at this point? Any more questions? Go once. Go twice. Okay. Uh, let's say 20 minutes or so. Let's try to knock out numbers two and three now that we have a little bit more experience with this number one. 20 minutes to get those two done. I know that we're getting practice and things, but we do also need to recognize we've got to move quicker on those understanding checks for these things. We've got to know our content well and move quickly. So, two and three. Let's get up. Let's move to our vertical surfaces. Race what's there. Let's figure it out. Leave that word there so that they can copy the stuff for now and then we'll come back. Jayla, you know there's a way easier way to do that, right?
Okay, do you see that little whiteboard symbol where the eraser is? Click on that. Boom. You can also just add it. Did you actually substitute zero in for x yet? For real. I guess not. Well, I mean, look. X is equal to zero, right? So what can you do with that zero? So have you actually substituted in for x yet? Okay. But take the time to do it. I mean, we're going to have a conversation about it. Because as long as you understand that, you can put it in the calculator. All right. Let's uh, grab a seat. Let's talk about this a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got that. Oh, sure. Oh, oh, sure. Oh, 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 yeah. We got it, Mr. Kim. Yeah. Try showing my cable. Good. Glad to hear All right. So, let's talk about number two first. Okay. Don't forget, by the way, right? We need to know um, our forms. We need to know the different features. I love that we wrote ax squared plus bx plus c above it. It helps us identify a, b, and c. Which of these features do we need to discuss? It looks like we all got the same answers, but is there anything I can add clarity to when it comes to identifying those features? Just for number two right now. We good? All right, so pause for one second. One thing I need to emphasize, I want to remind you is this. If you know what your input is, what can you always do? What's that more about? Substitute that input in for, well, substitute it in for x to get an output, right? So please be clear about that, right? Because here, for the y-intercept of 0, 0, 5, yeah, it's standard form. I can easily see that 5. But what do we know about every y-intercept that's ever existed? X is equal to 0. And so f of 0 is equal to negative 2 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 5. Right? All I'm doing is substituting that 0 in. You don't have to do all this work, but I do want to point this out. Because we're multiplying by 0, what is that going to become? 0, right? Because I'm multiplying by 0, what's that going to become? 0. zero. And what is 0 plus 0 plus 5? Five? 5. That's why this c is my y-intercept, right? I just substitute 0 in for x. But if 0 goes in for x, this is always going to become 0. If you know what your input is, substitute it in to get your output. And that matters for here and for here, because once you have your axis of symmetry, I substitute that 1 in... And what did we get out? Well, we got out of 7 for that vertex. Okay? If you know what your input is, substitute it in to get your output out. The, other, the last thing I do want to point out is this. High school students, and I told this to Lily Kate and to David, y'all are so hesitant to just write out the formula. Just write it out. Take the time that, okay, I want the axis of symmetry, so x is equal to negative b divided by 2a. You write that out, it's going to make your job easier if you've written this formula out as well to identify A and B to substitute it incorrectly, right? You don't have to jump straight to the equation. Take the time to write it out. Tyson? Hey, Tyson. Do I hear music coming from your hood? Thank you, sir. Uh, and also, put a hall. Okay. So, we have the input of 1, we get the output of 7. There's a vertex there. Um, what about number 3? We go with concave up, the vertex, the axis of symmetry. No questions on those three? Okay. Don't forget with H, I always need to take the opposite. Remember, that's explained by writing out the formula. Because it's x minus h, h is the opposite of that sign. That's it, right? Notice it's plus k, so whatever this value is, it's exactly the same thing. Um, 
Oh, and don't forget, am I asking for these x-intercepts yet from these two forms? Mm -hmm. Nope. So don't stress that. Okay. That's the next unit. Yes, David. So like we take the opposite. So like with minus, it'd be a uh, positive, right? Right. The idea is this, right? So I have x minus 5 squared. To go from x minus h to x minus 5, was h a positive 5 or a negative 5? h had to be a positive 5. Right? If I put a negative in here and I subtract a negative 5, when you subtract a negative, what does that become? Positive, positive right? Or adding. And so that's what, why we're taking the opposite, because to go from x minus h to x minus 5, h is just a positive 5. If we had x plus 5 from x minus h, well then what had to be true about h? h had to be a <coughs> negative 5. That's why it's always the opposite, because it's x minus h. That's the same thing with x minus r1 and x minus r2. You need the opposite of those, because the only way to get a plus 7 is if you subtracted a negative 7. Right. Does that make sense? So these things aren't random. It may take us time to get there, but all of it is logical and it makes sense. The last thing I do want to talk about is, um, I think we eventually got there on the y-intercept, but don't forget, because Lily Kay, I think this was getting you tripped up earlier, if I know that that's my input, what can I do with it? Uh, use it to scale the output. Say again? Use it to solve the output. Uh, sorry. I know why you're saying it. Don't use the word solve yet. I'm going to clarify why in just one second. Okay. Um, but what are we doing? The mathematical word is another S word, though. Substitute. Substitute it in. Okay. And so, Lily Kate, I'm going to show you in just one second why I don't want you to say solve, because it's mathematically inaccurate. Um, and so I'll help you moving forward. But I'm going to substitute that zero in, right? G of zero is equal to three-fifths times zero minus five squared plus 4.7. Write that out. Put this into the calculator with those nasty numbers. It's fine. Um, and, and notice, though, when we substitute that in, what did we get out? 70.5, maybe? I thought I saw that somewhere else. I did not know that off the top of my head. Um, so here's what I want you all to notice. You see how we took a really big expression and we made it smaller? Do you know what that process is called? It also starts with an S, but it's not solve. It is simplifying. simplifying. Okay. Okay. All we're doing is simplifying. Um, when you use that word solve, Lily Kate, the word solve actually means one thing in math. And most teachers don't teach that, which is a really bad thing. But you solve an equation like this. When we say solve, what we mean is we're trying to find what makes this equation true. Right? I substitute and I simplify. I didn't solve. To find what makes this equation true, I'm going to use my inverses more than likely. 10 is equal to 2x. I use my inverse of multiplying by a half to find out that x equals 5. That's solving, because this is the solution. This is the value that makes the equation, anybody know? True. True. So when we say solve, all we're trying to do is find what makes the equation true. Do you see that slight difference in that? And that's, it's important to understand that language. When you don't understand that language, it actually creates more issues down the line, which is part of the reason why we come to a class like mine, and I'm very technical with my language, and we get stuck because we haven't learned proper language. And so we mistake different things. Okay? So I just want to correct that a little bit. All right. What are your questions at this point? Going once. Going twice. Sold. Yes, Tevin. Uh, I forgot how you did that. You forgot how what? How you did zero for the y. Okay, does anyone know how to explain that we got that zero? Remember, so, Ted, remember, for a y-intercept, x is always going to be zero. Now, there is a reason why. Um, I talked about this with group one earlier, and let's illustrate it. A y-intercept is always located where? So, on the y-axis, right? So. So, Tevin, what is this point right here? What's that point right here? Say again. 
No, no, no. Like, what, what are the coordinates of that point? Can you see it? Okay. There's something you're missing with that. A zero in there? Remember, this is the point zero, comma five. A point always has an x and a y, doesn't it? So, Jayla, what is this point right here? Say again. Zero, comma two. Grace, this one right here. What's that point? That point right there? What do all of those points have in common, Seven. So to intersect the y axis, the x value is going to have to be 0. Does that make sense? That's why within, it's the same thing with the x axis, all of the y values will be 0. Right? And that's because that's the marker between the negatives and the positives. That's 0. Does that clarify for you? Okay, um, we've got 15 minutes to do a couple more problems, and this is going to be really good practice with all those skills that we just talked about, um, and we're going to apply this next week, uh, or tomorrow, not next week. So right here I have given you, which form? Vertices. No, no, which form have I given you? Standard? We go with standard? I'm asking you to tell me the vertex form. How in the world are we going to do that? Not just ask Mr. Kenny, you actually have the resources. Ethan, what are we talking about? What is the x value of the vertex when we have standard form? The x value is negative e divided by 2a. If you want vertex form, you have to know the, in general, like if you want vertex form, you have to know the vertex and you have to know well, that, but remember the line of symmetry goes through the vertex. I am trying to point out, okay, what is vertex form? It equals A, 3Cs, H minus H. Okay. So what do you have to know to write vertex form? You have to know H, you have to know K, you have to know A. Right? This is how we calculate H right here. We need to use that to figure out what K is. Does anyone know what A is already? A is 2, isn't it? And so that's what we want to recognize. If we're going to convert this to another form, this is going to help us practice figuring out what the vertex is. It's going to help us figure out those other equations better. So uh, let's get to our vertical surfaces and let's start writing uh, the different equations for all four of these uh, problems that I've given you. Let's get up. Let's move around. Uh, be quick. We got a good 12 minutes of learning. I don't want you to miss out on it. B divided by 2A. And, and we eventually all got there. And we did a very good job of recognizing once we have negative B divided by 2A, all I need to do is substitute. Okay? We substitute in, we get out of 2. But I do want to point this out over to this group. Y'all just left an A in the equation. Do we not know what A is? Uh -uh. Hey, guys. Look back here. Do we know what A is? It's 2. Remember, we can directly pull this A from standard form because shouldn't they be the same function? So A is 2. We calculated that H to be 3 with the negative B divided by 2A and the K was 2. Once you identify A, H, and K, you're good. So we're going to continue working with this some tomorrow to practice for our test that will be on Tuesday. Okay. So we're going to get some practice with linear and exponential as well, a little bit of practice with writing the equation of quadratics as well. And it's minus because you got an opposite. Right? Say again. You put minus because it's opposite. Right. H is a yeah. H was a positive three, right? So x minus h or x minus 3. Okay? Have a great rest of your day. It was fun learning and growing together. There it is.